Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Merton with The Contoured Chemist. All right guys, today we are breaking it down to troubleshooting coverage. Coverage only, I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible and show you the three main things that will actually determine the coverage you are getting with Saints 3D Foundation. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and thank you for being here. Let's just jump right on into it and talk 3D foundation. And we're going to do um, do some makeup today. And I'm going to talk to you guys about what actually will affect the coverage you get with this makeup. Because I feel like I get this question all the time. People are always asking for more coverage, more coverage. And it's really quite simple, the things that can give you more coverage. And so I'm just gonna show you guys what might be affecting the coverage you're getting, um, how you can simply tweak maybe a color or a brush or the motion of a brush, and it can give you dramatically different coverage. And it's just a little bit about knowing how this makeup works. Okay, so. First things first, and I feel like a broken record, but I'm always talking about color. When it comes to 3D foundation, color is everything. I can't stress it enough. The color can make the biggest difference in the way it looks, the coverage you're getting, and the longevity. And I know I'm always getting people arguing with me about that, but I I promise you, I'm not gonna go into that today, but it has to do with the pigment of these creams. So if you are new to 3D foundation, you might not kind of realize it, but we have a lot of different highlight shades. And I mainly talk about highlight because contours are more universal. And even though, yes, highlight and contours give coverage, um, the main majority of your coverage you're gonna be getting is gonna be from highlight. And that is what also can get you even more coverage in your contour areas, okay? So what I see a lot um, from just people that I rematch, um, from people that aren't getting the coverage they're wanting, is that it's one simple thing. They're using a color too light. I can't tell you enough. And I, and I feel like so many people are like, oh, that looks so dark but these creams go on very differently than traditional foundation. So they don't look like you used to be able to take a bottle and put it up to your jaw or swatch it on your wrist or whatever. You can't do that with these creams because if you were to swatch, it doesn't look like you could wear certain colors when you could, okay? And when you put a heavy swatch on your face, you're gonna be like, oh no, that's too yellow. That's too orange. That's um, just not gonna sit right on my skin. There's no way I can wear that shade. And I'm telling you, these are the shades I wear, okay? And even though they don't look like they match per se, these highlights aren't meant to match your skin. They are meant to work in a combination of shades and when applied in a certain way, they're going to give you the most flawless results of any makeup because it's gonna be completely custom to your face and nobody else's because it's all in how you apply, the amounts of each one you use, and your application method so you can get the look that you want. So although I would never be able to wear this shade all over, I can wear it strategically and I can't wear this shade all over but I still need it to get the look I want because I can't get the coverage or the brightness from one shade alone so this is why um, if you've been color matched to me I never give somebody one shade I feel like it is extremely rare that anyone can use one shade I also find it extremely rare to be able to use a super light shade unless you are both fair and have flawless skin with no, I call them areas of concern that you want good coverage on. And the reason why is as we move down in pigmentation, in lightness, 
um, the coverage isn't the same. So you got to think about the darkest points on your face. Okay. They're darker, right? So if you have more or less an even skin tone, but say you have your, your chin is darker or maybe a little bit more red. Or if you look at me, like, do you notice it, it, it can be the most subtle difference guys that my chin is not the same color as my neck. Okay. It's just a little bit darker, just a little bit lighter. I feel like my nose is easier to tell and it's not a huge difference, but it is enough of a difference that if I was to wear the shade that matches my neck after a couple of hours, this, the shade would start breaking up. Okay. It would start looking a little oily or just patchy. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but, but it literally will start breaking up on the skin. And I tell people that is your clue. Even if you can't look directly at your own face and be like, okay, I'm darker here and I'm darker here. That's why we have artists. That's why we mark up your face and show you where to apply certain shades for your skin. So if you can't tell, that is your biggest sign. That area is darker. And even if you can't tell because it's not a dramatic difference, this area of my chin will start breaking up if I match it there, okay? And the most subtle difference can mean that these creams aren't gonna give maybe adequate coverage or longevity on those areas that are slightly darker. So when you have an area that is by far a lot darker, like my hyperpigmentation, or my under eye circles, it makes sense that if you use a shade that matches down here, it's not gonna cover the same on the darkest points of your face, right? And again, coverage is something that I feel like is very personal preference. Some people want more full coverage than others. And I'm telling this from a perspective is, if you are not getting the coverage you want using one shade or even just a main shade, and a brightener, um, it's because that shade is definitely lighter than areas of your face that you're wanting coverage on. So that's why when I ask um, in my color match questionnaire, I ask, do you have any areas of concern that you want more coverage on? Because some of these highlight shades color correct those issues more than others. Some, in my opinion, don't at all. And that is just through four years of being an artist and feedback from my clients on what they show me, what they tell me. And what I've noticed when putting the makeup on people's faces or my own face, what color corrects certain things, what doesn't. Let's okay. just say all these shades do not color correct in the same way and for everything, okay? So this is why if you do have redness or hyperpigmentation or dark circles or blemishes or broken capillaries or scarring, any of those things that is a color issue. Those aren't having to do with anything about texture of the skin. You can't color correct pores or wrinkles or fine lines. I wish, but those are, um, those are textural things of the skin. Those aren't a color issue. So I'm talking just things that are make your face darker in points or lighter. Um, it can be both, right? Those are the things that make your face not all one color that require a color corrector for extra coverage. So if you've tried one shade, not getting the coverage you want, it's probably because you are darker in points than that highlight shade. And that is the number one issue I see across the board. People are, say, matched with white peach. I get this every day. Matched with white peach, tell me they're not getting the coverage they want. And that's because the darkest points of their face are mango, okay? Huge difference in color. But adding a color corrector to match those darkest points first, it's amazing that suddenly they can use the same shades they had before with an addition of a shade and get amazing coverage after that because we're matching those darkest points first. So you have to understand that not all colors are, are color correctors. Some work better than others, but it is all dependent upon your face and how dark the darkest point is 
and that's why there's artists. You don't necessarily have to figure out that yourself. Um, and some people have, most people have a majority of colors in their face. So I probably have certain areas that may be amber or maybe sandy or maybe mango. And I've got a large variety of colors in my skin, but I'm not necessarily going to use five highlight shades. And that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about finding um, a shade that's going to work for your skin in the way you want your makeup and the coverage you're asking for. And of course, we always wanna stay matching the neck. That is my ultimate goal is always giving a client the best longevity with the coverage they want and to keep them matching because that is a little bit easier said than done. So you might be saying, okay, but if I match the darkest point and then I put that all over my face, suddenly I'm three shades darker than my neck, okay? So that is why I recommend using a color corrector in a certain way, not necessarily only where you're darker, but I'm gonna give you a main shade that's going to then bring it all together so that you're always matching. Sometimes people need that brightener shade to really keep matching their neck. It depends on the difference in colors and what I call contrast. So if you have a really like much more, say red all over, your face and then your neck is much more fair. Um, you have to match the darkness of the redness first or you're never gonna get coverage on the redness or longevity from a shade that would match your neck. So that's what makes this makeup very different compared to traditional foundation. We have to match the darkest points first. That is the only way you get coverage with this makeup. Anything too light will not give coverage. In fact, I have tried numerous times. So this dark spot, um, I can wear sandy all over, okay? So these are my normal three shades right here. My color corrector, my main shade, and my brightener, okay? Those are the three I just swatched on my skin. Now, I can wear sandy all over, but after a couple hours where I'm darker, it starts breaking up and it starts showing really textured around my nose. If I build up and keep building up a color that doesn't color correct very well, what happens is I, this spot, especially where I have hyperpigmentation, it starts showing textured, okay? That is a sign that your color is not color correcting and it's too light. So if you're starting seeing like, cause we always talk about, you wanna build up these creams in thin layers when you're wanting more coverage it's not giving you coverage with one simple layer and you build up more and suddenly you see texture, it's the wrong shade for that spot, okay? So for me, uh, it shows texture under my eyes and on this spot when I'm trying to build up to get the coverage I want. That tells me it does not color correct my darkness, my hyperpigmentation, my under eye circles, and my redness. I see texture in those areas after an hour or two. So pay attention to your face. That is the best clue. That way you can go to your artist. You can be like, this is where I'm having issues. This is my makeup free selfie. And your artist should be able to clearly see you're darker in those areas. And those colors are, that one color is too light. Now, I will say, just as a caveat to that, that skin's texture can play a part. Longevity though is something really color based. So too light a shade, it will fade away. Also what you're applying under your makeup can make it fade away. We wanna avoid silicones. But if you're just seeing texture in certain areas, that's not always a color issue. Can be application, can be skincare issue, okay? So just gonna put that out there. You gotta exfoliate with this makeup, okay? Every few days, don't skip exfoliation, okay? Okay, so we've established my main shade is too light in certain areas of my face, okay? So what are my options? I can apply my color corrector only where needed, and you're still gonna get better coverage that way. But if you're looking for medium to full coverage, the best way to get there is by layering in the correct way, okay? We are not layering thick layers, Thick of any shade will not give coverage, no matter the shade. 
but by slowly building up in thin layers these creams strategically where you need them and then using a shade to maybe tone it down if it's a little bit too dark um, that's where the magic happens and you can get coverage on even the darkest points on your face to where you might need a super dark shade to match the darkest point. If my dark spot is four shades darker than my skin tone around it, that my skin tone color is never going to give me coverage over that, right? It makes sense. It's never going to cut. But if I just put that darkest point there, it's never gonna match the rest of my face, right? It'll always look like this darker point on my face. So the only way you're gonna stay matching is by layering a color that can then tone down that color and bring it back to matching the skin tone around it, okay? So that is what I teach, that is what I show, because that is the only way that works for me to get the look I want. And after years of playing with this makeup, I'm extremely picky. And so I only apply this way because I can literally get the most natural skin-like finish from using this technique, or I can get full coverage. And all I do is I keep the same shades and I switch up my brush and my technique on how I'm applying it, okay? But I the same principle, and I feel like Anyone can get the coverage they want if they're matched to the proper colors and using this kind of technique. So I'm going to show you guys how I can do it. And I'm going to talk a little bit about application and brush choices because I feel like um, that again can make the biggest difference. Even if you have the right colors, if you're not applying it right, you're gonna be moving around all that product and never get the adequate coverage because you're moving off your color corrector, right? So, okay, brush choices. Okay. Here are all the face brushes we offer, okay? There's a lot. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna take the powder brush out of the equation. I'll be honest, I only use it for it powder. Not, I have tried it for both highlight and contour. It is not my favorite. This side is really flexible, doesn't really move well on the face. This would be super full coverage, but I feel like there are better options over here. So I use this for powder every day under my eyes, but I'm not gonna use it to apply my highlights or my contours. Okay, so we're gonna start with the 3D brush, okay? This is a favorite of a lot of people, and I know a lot of artists, but I will tell you, Personally, I get more troubleshooting questions from clients using this brush than any other brush, which is why I don't recommend it for beginners. This end is kind of a little bit tricky to learn how to use properly because it kind of like pulls on the face. It can really cause streaking. If you are swiping, if you've watched my channel, you know I re never recommend swiping. Um, because it just does not give the same finish on the skin when you're swiping creams. Again, it can streak. This end, uh, you can use practically for a full face, but it is not, again, my favorite. When it comes to full coverage, yes, you can use it for your full face. Um, I do have videos <laughs> I can show you. I can link one below showing how to use this brush for your full face. It is just a little bit different on how I'd recommend applying than most people show. And that's why I feel like more people have issues with it. They just don't know how to use it properly in order to not apply too much. And because as beginners, everybody applies too much product at the beginning. Um, for beginners, it's not my favorite. Now for on the go, um, if you wanna just throw one brush in your clutch, and have your makeup and be able to do your full face with just one brush, then I do, I really do like it. But for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna show um, how I'd recommend where you're using it. Okay, so next is the detail. Now, I'll be honest, this brush is my absolute go-to. I can't use anything else to contour. So I will show you how to use it with contour. For highlight though, I feel like it does give a natural finish it is not easy to layer with this brush. It is not easy to press on product with this brush. 
The small end is good for under the eyes, but this is not the best for highlight when we're talking about getting more coverage, which is what this video is about. So I'll show you how I use it for contour, but for coverage purposes, I don't think it's the best to build up coverage. Okay. The next is the blend brush. Now you will see, I do use this a lot. Anytime I want the most skin-like natural finish. And it's because this brush is very loose, meaning it, um, picks up very little product and you can really kind of swirl it in areas to get the very lightest touch. Um, you can press it, but as you can see, it doesn't press on well. It doesn't press on at all very well. The small end can, so this is good for around the eyes and for detailed areas. Now, if I'm trying to get a natural finish and coverage is not my ultimate goal, then I pick up this brush. But for medium to full coverage, getting more coverage, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this because again, it's hard to press on with this brush. It's not meant for that, okay? So that leads us to our these two brushes. Now, the buff brush, okay? This is also really super popular and I do use this every day for my brightener. Now, if you can tell, look how dense that is, okay? It totally, if you want full coverage, I would say get this brush. Now, for a beginner, it can be a little bit difficult because it's so dense. And if you were to actually like swipe into these creams, you would have enough for your full face, okay? You would end up layering products and feeling really sticky and tacky and you'll be like, I hate this makeup, right? Because this is so dense, it picks up a lot of product. Um, and these creams you don't ever have to swipe into. Just a simple tap and that will give you enough for an area, then you can tap again. So I would say uh, the biggest issue with this brush is a lot of people wanna apply it like this, which is again, like I said, swiping. Um, if you are swiping on your main shade after you put on a color corrector, what does that tell you? You're moving your shade underneath, which means you would move all the coverage you just placed. This brush is a little bit more difficult to kind of what I call stipple or pounce or press, which is when you're building up coverage, what you wanna do with your main shade. It can be a little bit more time consuming, but it will pick up a little bit more product than the next brush I'm gonna show you. So if you are not new, to 3D foundation and you want fuller coverage, I would say once you've figured out how much product you need to be using, this is a really great brush for you to end up being able to get a full coverage day when you want because it is really gonna give you more coverage. Um, but like I said, it will take you a little bit longer to kind of press this on all over because I mean the brush is pretty good size but it still doesn't cover quite as much surface area as my fave brush. So last but not least is the blush and bronzer. Yes, it's originally designed for blush. I always have one for blush, one for a highlight because this is my all time favorite for um, medium to full coverage. Um, I can also get light coverage with it. It doesn't pick up too much product. It is amazing with mature skin. Something about how soft these bristles are, it gives you a really airbrushed finish, but the reason I love this brush is because for highlight, you can get anything from light to medium to full coverage, just depends on how you use it. So that's why it's so important to know how to use each brush for the type of coverage you want. It makes a huge difference. If you are doing this, or if you are buffing, if you are pressing, if you are pulling, it can all affect the way your makeup looks, okay? This is why when people are like, oh, I'm using the using the same uh, colors you do, my makeup doesn't look like that. It's technique, brush choice. I'm telling you, it can make the world of difference. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use this brush, okay? I'm gonna show you the differences between how I would start off, okay, with my color corrector. We're gonna match the darkest points first. And then I'm gonna show you how you can build up coverage without 
sacrificing coverage like by moving it around. I get a lot of questions where people are like, okay, I'm using that color, but then when I, by the time I go and put on, you know, this, it's, it's gone, okay? And that's all in application method, okay? Super simple, um, but again, takes a little bit of knowledge on how this makeup works to get it to work. Okay, so like I said before, we never swipe. Number one issue is using too much. I promise you, you will not get more coverage by layering on more product. Doesn't work that way. Start a little bit, you can always build. It is so much harder to take away with this makeup. So much harder, okay? So all I'm gonna do is simply touch it, pounce. That's it, okay? My brush, I probably should have cleaned it first so you can tell. Okay, but I'm gonna use it in the darkest points of my face. I'm not using it on my full face. If I color match you and I show it on your full face or tell you you need it on a full face, then do it where I tell you. But if you don't know, reach out to me or uh, look at the picture where I marked it. Okay, so if you look at my face, you can easily see uh, like I showed you before, my chin right here is a little bit more red. Obviously, my entire nose is darker, okay? Um, my rosacea isn't too bad today, but I have hyperpigmentation right where my contour is, under my eyes, okay, obviously right here. I have redness that goes across my entire mask, and then here as well, okay? So my under eyes are dark and purple, so... That being said, mango matches the darkest points of my face. It also color corrects redness, dark circles, and hyperpigmentation and blemishes unlike any other. So I'm gonna use it because that is truly the color of the darkest points of my face and that's what I need. Anything darker is gonna be a little bit harder for me to apply. So if this spot was much darker, I could use an additional color then use mango, then bring it down to my main shade. And it's all about kind of stair stepping back to get it to match your overall skin tone, okay? So I'm gonna just take this color and I'm gonna buff it. Now I always try to like explain to people to like less is more with your color corrector. Again, you can always build it up, but if you just go in with one thick layer, it doesn't matter how much of your main shade you put on too much of your color corrector is gonna shine through it and pull you darker or warmer um, and just not make, it's gonna be much harder to keep you matching, okay? So again, I'm gonna press on or tap in, buff on. So buffing, when I say buffing, small circles. And this brush is one of the softest brushes. So it even makes my redness kind of flare up for a minute because my redness is definitely light touch activated, but it'll go away in a second. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit on my nose. Now, my nose is both red and darker because it's like, I, it's completely covered with hyperpigmentation. I've got more freckles there. I'm gonna need more in that area. So if you have areas of your face, it might be just a little bit, use less there, okay? You can buff on some all over and then you can always go back and add more where needed. So I'm just gonna give a, a light buff there, okay? Just to kind of, look, I'm suddenly, it's matching so much better, okay? Another tap for my chin, a tap for my forehead. Okay? Now is where I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go in with more, okay? So I usually tell people buff on the first layer. You can then press on more for where you need it. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna kind of tap this brush on my nose so I get a little bit more coverage on the darkest point of my face, okay? Now you can even use a more detailed brush if say your full nose isn't darker, but it's just like broken capillaries, okay? You can totally go in because let me tell you from experience, broken capillaries when using a shade too light can make this entire area like wear off super fast and look textured and it's just because it's dark and purple right there, okay? A lot of people think red, 
the Demi has taught me it's purple. <laughs> so there you go. Now my nose has adequate coverage and I'm going to start going on the eyes. Okay. So again, I'm going to take that same brush for demonstration purposes. I'm going to show you, I'm going to just hit kind of right where the orbital bone is. That's where a lot of people's melasma or hyperpigmentation tends to pool, which you can tell that is where mine is as well. So I'm just going to take it right there. So I get a nice thin layer. Okay. Again, I'm building up this coverage. I'm not just trying to cover everything with one shade. Okay. I know that mango itself cannot co like color correct and give me adequate coverage all over, but it can color correct where I need. Okay. It. So for my under eyes, I, I kind of switched depending on the day. If I use a brush, I like to usually use this small end of the blend brush. This brush is just too big for me to get in on this inner corner, obviously. Okay, so I a lot of times use my hands as tools, okay? Don't count those out because your fingers are really good tools because they're warm and you can use the warmth, your, your body heat to kind of get these creams to melt down and kind of blend better. I know sometimes it can be a lot of like dependent on where you live, um, how dry your creams are or how cold it is. Sometimes in winter, you'll notice your creams go on a little bit different and you might have to kind of tap them on your face, let them warm up for a minute and then buff them on. Okay. So there are lots of different application methods depending on that, but I like to kind of just use my finger, tap, 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 get a little bit on that way I can go right in that inner corner kind of use the just apply a little bit with my pointer finger and then straighten it out and kind of just use the night I very gently I don't like to move around my under eye skin because that is definitely a problem area for me but I can kind of once I feel it is warming up I can kind of very gently kind of distribute it or tap Okay. And honestly, I feel like the best way to build up under eye coverage is with this method because I can tell it's already pretty good, but you can tell I've got some darkness right here. And sometimes I just need to add a little bit more mango and build up that coverage before I go in with my main shade. Okay. And then I like to hit like this entire area of hyperpigmentation Again, I like to use my finger. Now, I can use my brush. I feel like I get better coverage when I'm building up with my finger, and that's just simply because it kind of melts into the skin a lot better, and I can kind of tap around it to get it to kind of blur into the skin around it. Um, that's lighter and might not need as much coverage, but especially if you have a spot that is much darker and you kind of feel like it's just pinpointing the darkness of the highlight shade you're using there. Um, try that, okay? Okay, and every eye is so different. I learned through the years where the dark points are on, on both of my eyes. And so you might have to build up coverage in different points. It's kind of crazy. So if I had, I have like one blemish right here. If I had more, this is definitely where I build up coverage on those as well. Okay, so I ended with my color corrector. I didn't put it all over. I know it's really hard to tell on camera that it doesn't exactly, like you might be like, oh, you already look matching. I promise I don't if I was to be in like real <laughs> natural lighting. If I was to apply it along my jawline where I didn't, it pulls me much darker than my neck. So, but I told you, the difference can be very subtle on your face, yet it makes a difference in the creams. So, I'm picking up the same brush, okay. This is where the importance sets in on how you apply your main shade to build up coverage. And again, the brush choice can make a huge difference because if you are picking up this brush 
and you start going like this and swiping it because this brush kind of lends to swiping or this brush, which again, pulling where you just placed a color meant to give you more coverage, it's going to move all that coverage. And then suddenly you're just mixing the colors on your skin. Okay. I, I am not going to get nearly the coverage from mixing mango and sandy as I would two layers where mango is matching my darkest points. Sandy is toning down the warmth and building up coverage in thin layers. Mixing them together gives just a different color. And that color does not color correct the same way as mango does by itself. So hopefully that makes sense. It is key to press on this layer, key. Now you wanna keep it light handed, okay? And I feel like if you are pressing on and moving around on your face in this way, it is going to get dispersed super easily. So again, tap in. Now I'm gonna tap along my jawline because I hadn't put anything there yet, okay? Now, if you want more coverage on your contour areas, put it there as well, okay? That will just simply build up coverage. Since our contours give coverage, you're just gonna have twice as much coverage in those areas, or three times as much if you're like me. I put my color corrector there, then I'm gonna put my main shade there. You guys see a fly in my video? I'm trying to catch it. I just saw it. Ah, it's me so mad. Okay, so again, pressing, but look, I am literally just pouncing and lifting straight up, but I'm just moving my brush around. But look at that coverage in comparison. You can tell how much it really tones down the warmth. So I'll show you on half my face. Now I did not color correct up here whatsoever. Um, my forehead is not a problem area for me as far as it doesn't bother me. I just get a little bit of redness and right here can really be a problem area for people seeing texture. Sometimes that is because you're using a shade too light. I think I missed. <laughs> because you're using a shade too light. And again, a shade too light just adds more texture. So unfortunately, a shade too light can add, can just be a problem on so many different levels with this makeup. Okay. So under the eyes again, now I do just use the same brush for this shade just to kind of even out and bring just one more layer of coverage, okay? So hopefully you can see the difference, okay? I now match my neck really well, and I have far more coverage, okay? Now, to me, it's starting to look a little makeup -y, which I don't like, but stay with me. I will show you how we mitigate that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my full face. Again, pressing, pouncing, Okay, I'm not doing this. Now, if you are wanting more coverage on certain areas and then say you're like me and you don't really have anything on the jawline that you need more coverage on and you want it to look like skin there, there you go. You can buff on where you didn't place a color corrector. But if you placed a color corrector somewhere, do not move the brush like this where you are gonna just mix it all together. You've got to tap press, pounce, stipple. I know not everybody knows what stipple means, but pounce that brush. Don't be sliding it across the face at all. No swiping, no swiping. Sometimes I do it so fast, you might not be able to tell how I'm bouncing the brush. After a while, you just get super fast. You, you might think it looks super time consuming at the beginning, but this brush applies faster than this brush does. Because again, you can do the same thing with this brush, but again, you gotta press it. You gotta press it and you can't be pressing it and swiping like this, which is what 
I feel like this brush leads to. You kind of have to in order to get no brush strokes on your face with that brush, okay? So this brush, I never have issues with brush strokes. I don't have as many issues of people picking up too much product because the brushes are, the bristles are loose enough that it doesn't pick up nearly as much as this brush does, which just picks up a ton. Okay, so now we're gonna contour and we're gonna contour in a way that doesn't move the colors we just placed. So I feel like a lot of people have redness in this area or hyperpigmentation, dark spots in their contour areas. And then as soon as they apply their contour, what happens? Your color corrector gets moved and you simply no longer have color correction there, which is your coverage, right? So this is why I apply my contour in this way. Okay, and this is why I teach it in this way. Okay, ready? I'm gonna pounce it at an angle. Okay, I'm gonna get that color on about half my brush so it kind of fades into the rest of my brush. So when I'm applying it, it's gonna blend without me moving that product around, okay? So I'm gonna start where the shadow would be the darkest, up by the top of the ear, and I'm gonna stop about the corner of my eye because anywhere in there is just gonna add to my smile lines, right? So I'm just going to start pressing underneath my cheekbone and I'm just pressing. And then I'm gonna start moving that color up as I'm pressing and I am not swiping my brush ever. I am gonna either gently flick or press and I can completely just press on and blend out my contour by simply doing those same pouncing motions. You see that? Okay, you don't have to be crazy vigorous with our contours. They blend out, in my opinion, a little bit too easily. And so some people just blend away their contour because they start doing this, okay? Don't be scared of it. You can blend it out as much or as little as you want. But if you have problem areas along your contour, press it on, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And if it gets a little dark, a little bit too much, instead of going back and forth like this, just grab your highlight brush. Tone it down a bit. We haven't even got to the perfector yet. You can still blend in other ways besides this, okay? Kind of press this. And you can kind of blur any harsh lines. Now, where I didn't color correct, I don't have to be so careful. I can pull up, I can pull down, okay? It is all about learning your face, where you place stuff, what, what works for you, and where you have those areas that you needed that color correction. because not everyone needs it on your full face, right? Okay, so we highlighted and contoured. Now we can brighten, okay? The reason I do my makeup in this way has a lot to do with my spots I've covered, okay? I like to then use the brightener as just one more level of coverage, okay? So I do use the buff brush for this. I use the small end, and that's because I can press it on without moving anything I just placed, okay? Again, I'm gonna just tap in, okay? I'm gonna go right in that inner corner and I'm just simply tapping. Tapping on the side of my nose because the sides of my nose are still darker, do you see that? And then I'm just gonna go right here. Now I'm not going all the way up to the lash line because I've got issues. I do have a lot of fine lines there. The lighter you go, the more texture you're gonna see with your brightener. And if you have texture already somewhere, you don't need to brighten it, okay? So kind of just skip the spots that you might have issues with. You can still brighten and get that effect without going all the way up. So I'm gonna go all the way here, right over that big spot of hyperpigmentation because even though Aura, my brightener, does not color correct hyperpigmentation in the least, okay, 
I put a color down that did. And then I brought it back to matching. But in order for me to wear this color under my eyes, I have to color correct first. If I was to put this color under my eyes directly, it's not pretty. It shows every line. It gives no coverage. Um, it just makes my under eyes look extremely textured. And I cannot brighten unless I layer in this way. Okay, so center of the chin. I feel like this is more for brightening effect, not so much coverage. Um, like I said, this will just show more texture, but quick nose contour so I can actually see where I'm brightening. Okay, so super makeup y, right? <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but makeup y, right? Totally makeup y. Here is where I bring in my secret weapon. Now, I feel like I get both sides of the story. People are either like, oh, I'm using my beauty blender or my sponge from Target and it's not doing anything, or I'm using your perfecter, but it's pulling off my coverage, okay? And I will just be honest, guys, it took me years to figure out the real purpose and the real way to use our perfecter sponge, okay? I, I didn't think it was necessary for a very long time. And then when I figured out what, how it really works, like, and how I can get my makeup to look like skin and yet still keeping coverage, it was mind blowing for me. So this is why I talk about it all the time. I don't recommend doing this application method whatsoever because this is what you're gonna look like, which is personal preference if you like your makeup uh, more full coverage like this, but I want my makeup to give me coverage and yet look like skin and look natural. Um, that is my personal preference and this is the only way I can get it to look like that on me. Okay, so I have three perf perfector sponges here. Okay, don't mind, we no longer have these colors and they're dirty, but um, I prepared them three different ways and this is why I stress this so much. So I have a dry one and I'm just gonna show you on over here, this one, if you don't know, nothing has been done to it, okay? It is completely dry, it's just been sitting here. Okay, and I'm just gonna run it underneath my eye. Now you'll see a slight difference, okay? It does kind of take off a little bit of extra. It doesn't look quite so makeup-y, okay? Um, okay, but if you look underneath my eyes, I'm still getting creasing, okay? But it did not take off coverage, right? Dry perfectors aren't going to pull off so much excess that it removes coverage, okay? Now, I'm going to show you this one, okay? Notice the size difference, okay? Doubled in size. I ran this under running water, squeezing it till it fully doubled in size, then I squeezed it out, and then it is like this, okay? Doesn't look super, super wet, right? A little bit. Okay, which side should I try this on? I'm gonna try it over here. I mean, you mainly can tell right there. Do you see how where I first touched my face, suddenly I have a big patch of red showing on my nose, okay? Why? Because this was too wet, okay? And this has been sitting out to dry the entire hour I've already been talking, longer than that, right? So if I never squeeze this in a towel, if I was to really squeeze this, 
I can still get water out. And I squeezed it really good in the sink, okay? But I did not squeeze it within an, without like within an inch of its life and shook it out and made sure there was no water droplets and then dried it with a towel. I didn't do that. And that is what I get. It pulls off my cup, okay? So first let me fix my face to slightly apply a little bit more. Okay, better. All right, this one, I did that too, okay? They look the same. You can't see any, you really can't see anything coming off on my finger, okay? This one feels damp if I squeeze it. This one does not, it feels cold. I made sure no more water could come out when I squeezed it and shook it. And I dried it a good three or four times in a very absorbent flour sack towel. Then I let it dry this whole time. This will give me the perfect look, okay? Now it will pull off excess, so it looks like skin, but it is not gonna take off all my coverage, got something in my eye, <laughs> okay? It will also, those areas that look textured, I'm bouncing it over that. It will let those sit better in my on my skin. Again, pulling off that excess brightener, okay? It will also kind of blur these areas without removing all my contour, okay? It helps me not get any creasing in my small lines. And a lot of times people are complaining, well, I'm building up more coverage, but then I'm getting creasing, okay? Because obviously the more creams you apply as you're building up to a full coverage look, the easier it is for it to crease because you have more product on your face. But this will remove excess and it will leave coverage. Okay, the key is to turn it and it should feel cold to the skin for it to actually remove excess. Otherwise, it's not going to. It will, to a, at a degree, it will kind of help press it into the skin. But if you're looking for that skin-like finish, there is no way around it. You have to use the perfecter and you have to prepare it right. And um, I'm telling you guys, it's a game changer when you figure out how magical this is and how it unfortunately works differently than any other sponge I've ever tried on the market. Um, and once you try one, you'll understand why. It's just something about it, it's softer. Okay, so once I feel like it looks like skin again, now I go in with my lip and cheek. And the reason I do this is because some of our lip and cheeks are really sheer. And if you perfect after you put a lip and cheek on, it's gonna take off a lot of that pigment. And it can help with longevity if you kind of press all those highlights in the skin, get the look you want, then put your lip and cheek on exactly the way you want it, and you won't have to deal with that. So, I can't help it, I gotta use the brand new shade. This is La Cienega, super, that's my favorite. Um, okay, and then, how you apply your lip and cheek matters as well. Some people, if you put it on with your finger and then you go in and start doing this to blend, guess what? If you color corrected that area, you just moved all of that product around that you spent all that time getting coverage on. This is why I press on my lip and cheek. I just color corrected all that hyperpigmentation. I don't want it moving, right? So I'm gonna smile, I'm gonna tap, and I'm simply pressing it on just like I did with my main highlight shade. Okay, on up right along that contour. Okay, apples of the cheeks. And you can easily build this way. You're not, you know, trying to blend out too much pigment. You see exactly what it's gonna look like. And all you have to do is add more until it's is dark or however much you like it. And if you get too much, then I say use the perfector around the edges to kind of blur out those harsh lines. See how easy that is? Now, I didn't move any coverage. I still have the same coverage and 
I got my lip and cheek exactly the way I want. Last but not least, illuminator. I'm gonna go ahead and use Angel here. Again, I'm gonna really press in a lot and swipe in. This is one of the only things I ever swipe into with my perfector. That way it's loaded up and I can just press, again, press on that upper cheekbone. Okay, just kind of tap and it will apply that color. Okay, so now you guys know why I tap on everything. <laughs> okay, friends, there you go. I finished up my face and powdered because as we build up to full coverage, like I said, creasing can increase, right? So I powdered anywhere I thought would be a little shiny, definitely under my eyes as mature eyes I have to, and then in my small lines here. And so I know I won't get any creasing, during the day, I put more La Cienega on my lips and I am good to go. So I hope that was helpful. Remember three things for application, coverage, color, 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 color. I can't tell you that is like night and day will make the biggest difference. Brush choice, how you're using that brush. So application method, member build up in thin layers. If you're not getting adequate coverage from just one layer, add another one, okay? you can easily do color corrector, main shade, color corrector, main shade, until you're at the coverage you want. Then finish up your makeup, use a little bit of setting powder so it's not going anywhere and you should be good to go. So I hope that was helpful. If you need a color match or you need help with color correcting, please fill out my color match request. It's in the drop down below the video. Along with all of the shades I used in today's video, um, down below. I'd be happy to help you out. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Love you. Bye.